that's me. So uh, let's jump in. So we're going to talk about custom row actions today. So we talked a little about these in the past couple of uh, times, specifically around launching flows. But we've actually gotten a lot of questions about these. There's a little bit of confusion on how to put these in, what they do, why would you use them, and how you do it, and all that stuff. So we're going to cover that. So the way these work is right now, if I have a list with no formats, right, if I click on something, I get these buttons up here. I get like an edit and a share and all these nice little buttons. Uh, I can also, of course, click on the title and it opens up the, the panel over here. You can also double click anywhere on the item and it does the same thing, right? And that's okay, but just like we've done before where we wanted to take away that need to come in here and do flow and all that stuff and you select, if you want to be able to bring those buttons down here, or bring some of those actions directly into your list items, there's support for that. So if we come in here and we're going to column settings, we're going to format this column, and we're going to do something like, uh, we'll type in LM type, and we'll make this a button. So this is very important. Customer actions can only be applied to a button. You can put them anywhere, but they will not do anything. So if I say custom row action, and here this is a guy like this. So we got to put in an action inside. So we say action. In this case, we're just going to do that default click. So we're going to imitate what the title button is doing, right? And of course, we should add some text content. <laughs> Sounds good. That's always a helpful thing to do with a comma. Now, if we preview that, right, we get this beautiful button here. I'm going to save that because we get a little bit of weirdness sometimes. Refresh that. Now, when I hit this, wow, it does the exact same thing that I could do with the title. Very exciting. So that's not exactly the most exciting one, but let's take a look. We can go a little further with that, right? So maybe you don't want a big uh, gray button on your screen here, which makes total sense to me. So we've got a series of samples now. So if we come over here to our list formatting repo, right, and we come down here to column samples, you'll see there's this brand new one called generic row actions. And in here, there is a format for each one of these different types of actions. So you can use these, and these are just fairly simple versions of this to kind of demonstrate that. We're going to apply these. Take a look at them in action. So you're just going to cut and paste those, preview that. So now it's the exact same thing, but you'll notice it doesn't look like a button anymore because what we've done in here is we've added children and some styles. So some of the styles, we made that weird gradient from uh, 1998. We made that transparent, right? We added a child here where we're just adding a nice icon called Open Pane. All right, and we can do that for all of these. So it's pretty straightforward. Well, it only works when I save it. So we'll save that one. All right, we'll come over here to edit action. I'm going to do the exact same things. And you guys can see some of these here. Now, one thing with the edit action, right, we paste that. You'll notice up here that the action I'm using is edit props. Now, if you're using something like Visual Studio Code, you'll see that when you use edit props, see that right there? It actually says, that's not right. You failed. Right, because it's saying it should be edit item props. That is a bug in the schema. So ignore that. It is edit props. Okay. Now, the reason it's called edit props and not just edit is because it's like the same thing for document libraries, right? When you go and you edit the properties there. So when we hit edit properties, we save that. Again, similar icon type thing here over here. Let's format this one. Let's get a share, and then we'll demonstrate all of these. So this one has a custom action of share. Very exciting. Come over here, and we're going to go to delete action. I'm going to format that column. I'm going to grab this one. Again, I'm getting all of these from the repo, so I'm going a little fast on purpose. So if we come here, we can see action is delete. So let's close these for now. All right, so now we get this edit action, which, again, opens it all the way in edit mode. This is going to work nicely if you've already customized your list form with Power, Power Apps. All of that's going to work exactly the same, so you don't have to do anything different. The shares and open up this nice little thing so I can send my link to my hello item or whatever I've got here. All right, and delete is going to prompt them to delete it. All right, so obviously you can't just straight up delete it, but you can prompt them for them to delete it. Now, so this isn't super helpful, right, necessarily to put these here since they're already up here. It does prevent us from having to come up here, select an item, then choose edit. So there is some helpfulness there. It's even more helpful in a view format, however. So you come over here to something like this. Right, you can see this is a view format. We've actually wrapped the entire thing in a button. So if I take a look at that, format the current view, you can actually see the entire row formatter is wrapped in a button. Don't necessarily see that, but by doing that, the entire item is now able to open it up. So you can do that as well. 
Uh, we've got some other formats to show individual buttons kind of linked in there. You can do some conditional showing on those. Uh, what you can't do is the condition for the action. And, of course, we've seen this one before, right, where we format the flow. So let me grab my execute flow. So this one's slightly different, which we've seen, and that when we do this one, we would only have to provide not only the action of execute flow, we have to provide the ID of the flow associated with this list. And again, we've covered this a number of times, just some samples, some guidance on that, so I'm not going to go into real details on that. But one of the things I wanted to point out that's pretty cool, let me refresh just to make sure I got everything here, is when I do something like uh, the butter is turned, I do my flow action. This flow has already been associated with this list and it's for selected items, right? So you come up here and I say run flow. Now watch what happens here. This is pretty cool. We'll see. Watch this butter is turned. Is it going to Oh, look at that. So we had a live list update, right? So the butter is turned suddenly got an exclamation mark, a very useful flow, right? So that's what we can do with that emphasized flow. But that's really interesting, the idea that I didn't have to refresh this. So let's take a look at this in a little more detail. So this is cool, but what if, uh, what if for the horses, we just saw this presentation, right? We come over here to our standard Warrior Horses site, and we want to see this in action maybe in a little more elaborate way, maybe less useful, but more elaborate. So we come into the secret lab where experiments are run upon these horses. All right, so we'll zoom that back out. So we've got ourselves a nice view format here. Right. The thing is, we can take advantage of So we've got you know, an elaborate view format. Let's refresh, make sure I got it. So we don't lose all my connections. All right, good enough. I zoomed out too much. Reset the zoom. Perfect. Okay. So we've got my experiment here going on. I've got these nice buttons over here that I can style any way I want. Right. I can put images inside here. I can make these just buttons. I can put all sorts of elements, icons, everything else. Right. A report's just going to open up the list item pane. Alter's going to do the same kind of edit. Right, killing the experiment, not the horse itself. Right, we'll delete it and notify, of course, it's going to provide us that share link. But here's something else we can do. Right, so when we take advantage of, say, start in a flow here, we can begin the experiment and we run that. You notice one of the cool things here is that we had those live list updates before. You'll see that your format actually can respect those live list updates themselves. All right, so as you th execute things in the background, you can keep your list view up as almost a dashboard of things, right? So this is a little bit of a strange experiment um, in some of this. But you get the idea that this quickly becomes really powerful. So as other people are editing things behind the scenes, right, or you've got flows, long-running flows, or updating things, or other things are triggering, you can keep something like this up all the time and keep that going. All right, and you can even associate different flows, right? So I've got a, a halt experiment. So you get the idea that this suddenly becomes really, really powerful, and you can do so much more by integrating some of these things with either flow or with these live, live list view updates within your view and column format. So, woo, awesome stuff. All right, let's review real quick. So custom row action only works in a button element, but use those style and children properties. Get all fancy in there. All right, there is some weirdness with the data redraws. You saw that I was refreshing. So if you apply this, in your format and you've just done the preview and it doesn't seem to work, hit the save button, refresh, and it should work. Uh, there's also some interesting stuff going on when a list item gets updated. There's an open issue for that. And again, you only need that action params if you're doing the execute flow. And this is an important one. This is the one of the only items in all of this format where you cannot use an expression, and that's in the action property. Uh, so if you need to have a different action for your button, you're actually going to need to use our display none trick and have two different elements for that. So here's those actions again. You've got default click, you've got edit props, you got share, delete, and execute flow. Very exciting. And again, ignore the schema. It's a lie. The schema's a lie. All right. Last thing here. Those live list updates are magical. So take advantage of those. The only real sadness right now is not, and I'm hoping yet, work in the list and library web parts. So it's only something that's live within the list view itself. So but take advantage of that. I think it's really, really powerful. All right. And last but not least, here is where you can find those samples. If you want to take a look at some of that code, you can go over here and see our row actions. We've also got a little more details on the start flows. Um, and then if you want to see where we've integrated inside a larger view, you can see in the contact card format or where we've wrapped the entire view in an action, you can see it in the bulletin board format. All right, that's it for this week's
exciting list formatting tips. Thanks, everybody. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Chris. Really, really, really great stuff. Um, um, it has to be something in the air or water in Indiana uh, related on the <laughs> demo content, um, like mentioned in the window. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, really cool stuff, uh, and these are great uh, samples, and like I said, uh, the GitHub uh, repo has all of the samples available for every, anybody, and I know that Chris has done a good job on clarifying if there's a list dependency, it is defining uh, what kind of list has to exist and what are the columns as, and all of that uh, for the list. But I think that's it from this one.